What's up, YouTube? There's been a big debate raging over pullovers recently, whether they're actually a lat exercise or whether they're purely pecs and triceps, and today I'm going to try to settle it. Spoiler alert, pullovers are a lat exercise, or at least they certainly can be if used correctly for that purpose. The debate is centered around biomechanics with the pullovers are not a lat exercise camp, claiming that pullovers aren't a lat exercise because the lats can't meaningfully act on the arm for much of the movement. Now, in one case, this is simply the result of being an egomaniac with anger issues who can't stand when anyone has a different opinion from him. <coughs> Paul Carter. <coughs> Sorry, uh, my whole family has been sick. I'm getting over it. That's why I didn't upload last week. Uh, bear with me. I'll try not to cough too much for the rest of the video. Uh, but anyway, I think in most cases, the people who think that pullovers aren't a lot exercise are correct about the biomechanics involved but simply lack the specific experience with pullovers to understand how they should be performed to target lats. So in this video, I'll explain the biomechanics involved in making pullovers effective for lats. I'll explain some flaws in the EMG study, which show low activation for lats and pullovers, and I'll demonstrate some pullover variations that are very effective at targeting lats. Before we get into it, please do all the algorithm stuff that helps the channel grow. I just got a new mic, so hopefully you guys are enjoying the audio quality, and I'll keep making more improvements to my videos as we go. All right, let's get into it. So back in the day, the pullover was thought of as the squat for the upper body, and I think that's a really apt comparison that's going to help put this debate into context. So the squat isn't just one exercise, right? It's a whole category of exercises. Not only are there multiple variations of back squats, but there are just multiple squatting exercises. Now imagine if somebody just looked at the low bar, hips back, powerlifting style back squat and said, well, this squats aren't really a good quad exercise because you know, they don't really activate the quads that much. That'd be kind of silly, right? Because that's not the only squat there is. I mean, not only are there ways to make back squats far more quad dominant, but there are plenty of other squats that, you know, enhance the quads even further. It'd be kind of a silly thing to say. That's exactly the same thing um, with the pullover. It's a category of movement. There are tons of different variations. They certainly don't all have the same emphases. Um, so some, just looking at one variation and saying that, pullovers don't target this or that muscle is kind of silly. Now, usually what they'll do to explain this is use a skeleton with some rubber bands attached, and they'll move the skeleton through the, the motion to show you um, what's going on and why pullovers are not a lat exercise. Um, I don't have a skeleton on hand because I'm not a serial killer. Um, I do have two little girls, um, so I do happen to have a teddy bear, which I'm going to have to use instead. Now, those of you who uh, who have followed some of my other videos will know that my eldest actually goes to sleep with a, a um, brachiosaurus. She likes dinosaurs, but it's still handy to have teddy bears on hand in case you need to have a tea party or demonstrate some biomechanics. And I don't have any rubber bands, not because rubber bands are for serial killers. I just don't have any on hand right now, so I'm going to use a, a hair tie. Um, so Bear here is going to demonstrate the pullover biomechanics using the hair tie. We're going to kind of set up the hair tie the way they use the rubber bands in these videos. It's kind of, we're going to do the best we can, right? You'll, if you've seen these skeleton videos, you'll kind of see the similarities here, right? This uh, rubber band is meant to kind of simulate the lats attaching up on the arm and then down um, on the spine, right? Okay, so usually what they'll show you is, okay, you know, in a pullover, when we're raising the arm and we get it all the way up over the head, look look what's going on with the um, with the lat. It's in basically a straight line with the arm, so that means there's really no leverage for it to act to bring the arm in an arc down, right? It's not really useful for that. Um, what does have leverage at that point is the pec. See, now I have the little rubber band thing. Uh, situated as if it were the pecs, see how that actually does have leverage to bring the arm down. That's why they're they're saying that the um, the pullover is a pec exercise rather than a lat exercise, right? And uh, obviously triceps too. I don't disagree that the lat or that the pullover is a tricep exercise. I think uh, no matter how you do them, there's going to be some tricep involvement. Whether that's a feature or a bug is up to you. I actually think it's a feature. Uh, but anyway, that's this this is the standard ex explanation of the pullover. Because um, in this maximally stretch, stretched position, the pecs are what have the best leverage, uh, not the lats. The pullover is not a lat exercise, right? Um, the only problem is 
that uh, that demonstration of it is just not doing the pullover correctly for lats. Um, if you're trying to use the, the pullover correctly for lats, you're not going to want to be straight back like bears. See how bears straight up and down? And the skeletons and all these um, depictions are always straight up and down, right? Um, that's not actually how you're going to want to do a pullover if you're actually trying to use them for lats. In every case, you're going to want to get some kind of uh, extension in your spine as much as possible. They even back in the day had um, semicircular moon benches that were designed to get you into more extension. And that's going to make it into a much more effective lat exercise. And Bear's going to demonstrate that. Hold on, give me one second. Okay, so if Bear actually wants to make pullovers into an effective lat exercise, here's what he's going to want to do. He's not just going to lie flat on his back on the bench like this, right? He's actually going to try to get as much spinal extension as he can. Uh, there are various ways that he can do this. I'll show some later. But he's going to want to arch his spine. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see this. All right. What, and what that does is it's already creating some additional stretch in the lats um, so that you run out of lats, you run out of lat stretch when your arm is still in a position where the lats have leverage to act on it. So now the, lat, the lats are maximally stretched. Let's see if you can see this. Yeah, the lats are maximally stretched, but Bear's arm still isn't up over his head where we have that, that straight line, right? See, see the leverage here? The lat is being stretched now, and I know I'm I know I'm uh, pulling it up with my finger, but I'm basically just trying to simulate the fact that the lat is actually like attached to your body. It's not just a like a, a core that can just go straight, right? It is actually attached to your body, so this will actually stretch it. Try it out if you don't believe me. Anyway, so we're now we're getting the lats maximally stretched at a point where they still have leverage to act on the arm, and that's what um, extending the spine like this does. Now, if you weren't going to do that, again, when the lats are maximally stretched, they're not going to have any leverage to act on the arm, okay? And there are a variety of ways that Bear um, could modify the pullover technique so that he is getting that spinal extension. I hope I hope that's coming through. You, you guys are seeing that he's, um, he's kind of doing that spinal extension. Okay, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, it may make more sense when I show some videos later to demonstrate. But really quick, I wanted to talk about this EMG study that often gets cited. And this EMG study showed very low activation for lats in the pullover. Um, now, a lot of people looked at that and just said, okay, pullovers are bad for lats. Well, I actually looked at the study. I looked at the methods. And the most important thing that stood out to me, other than the fact that sample size was ridiculously low, but that's common, not worth talking about, is the technique they did. And what they had their participants do is simply lie flat on a bench. They weren't doing a cross bench style pullover like you typically see. They were just lying flat on a bench and then doing barbell pullovers. So that is going to put us in exactly the position we're talking about where the lats have or have zero leverage stacked on the arm. So we would expect uh, exactly the results that we found. Now, in a second, I'm going to put up a video of me just doing the exact technique they were doing just to show you uh, that's why no lat activation was found. And then I'll show you some techniques that are much more effective for actually getting the lats. So in this video, I'm performing pullovers exactly as they were performed in the EMG study. I read the paper and just did exactly what they said. I think they used a straight bar, not an easy curl bar, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. And you can see that here my arms are basically going over my head now. Just I'm instinctively trying to arch up because I'm experienced with pullovers, but they're still pretty much going over my head and losing some leverage. I can definitely feel it more in my pecs doing this. And you can imagine that some boots just taking some random study are most likely going to get a lot of pec activation and not a whole lot of lats out of this. So this is probably my favorite pullover variation for lats overall. Hanging off the bench like this pulls you into a ton of extension and makes it extremely effective for the lats. Even though my arms aren't going anywhere near over my head, my lats are actually fully stretched at the bottom of this. So they're getting a lot of stretch without losing leverage. It's a fantastic exercise. Although if you aren't experienced with training extension, I would use caution with this one because it can pull you into a lot of extension. I certainly wouldn't recommend this variation for everyone, but it does put a lot of stretch on the lower lats. I personally like it a lot. Like I said earlier, pullovers aren't an exercise, but rather a category of exercise. And this is yet another novel way that the old-timers solve for the problem of the lats losing leverage. So in this variation, the rebounding pullover 
you use the bounce off the bench to carry you through the portion of the exercise where the lats would lose leverage so that you can stimulate the lats with heavier weight throughout the rest of the range of motion. It's not my personal favorite, but it just goes to show that there are a lot of ways to solve this problem. Instead, look that at the way said, you don't need any kind of in this demonstration video and look where I stop my arms, look where I stop the expansion. The I go deep, but I don't go over, too deep. But this is the way you should do it as well. This is best for performance. It's also best for hypertrophy. A good metaphor and image I can give you that is going to put you in the correct mindset for pullovers is I want you to think of your ribcage. Okay, so I hope those examples help to clarify the pullover debate. It's not that the biomechanics guys with the skeletons are wrong. I mean, what they're showing is correct. It's just what they're showing with the skeleton is not actually what's happening when someone's doing a pullover correctly for lats. Now, you can use them for pecs if you want to, and I suppose that's perfectly fine. But when we're talking about lats, what they're doing with the skeleton, well, the skeleton isn't performing a proper lat-focused pullover, right? And the same thing with the EMG study. I mean, the study's not wrong. It's picking up the muscle activation that it's picking up. But based on the technique they're using, that's what we would expect. And we would not expect it to be lats, right? Um, not that EMG studies are necessarily that well correlated with hypertrophy. But in this case, I wouldn't say the study's wrong. I think they're just not doing the technique the way you would want to do it if you want to stimulate lat growth. So this brings up kind of a bigger issue in the fitness industry. Um, a lot of people want to focus on qualifications and education. And I'm not, in this case, I'm not bashing qualifications and education, but they don't necessarily allow you to speak on things that you don't have any practical experience with. Like the other day, for example, um, I got blocked by Squat University on Instagram because I corrected a video that he made where he was talking about the one hand deadlift and he was saying that um, <laughs> the key to keeping the bar balanced in the one hand deadlift is to keep your core tight. And he was showing, um, you know, one of his clients losing their balance on the bar. And the reality is, my friends, you keep the bar balanced by holding it in the center. If you hold the bar up center like he was having his client do, um, all the core tightness in the world is not going to fix that issue. So, you know, qualifications don't necessarily allow us to speak effectively on an exercise that we have no practical familiarity with. I mean, you can talk all day about biomechanics, but if you don't know what the exercise is really supposed to look like in practical terms to make it work effectively, you know, you're going to be missing some key information if you're trying to design a study, but you don't know the correct technique for an exercise to get it to achieve the desired outcome. And certainly your study is not going to reveal that desired outcome. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you're interested in any of the pullover techniques that I demonstrated in this video, or uh, quite a few more, they're all discussed in extensive detail in my book, Old Time Lifts for Modern Lifters, which is available at my website. So if this has been interesting to you, check it out. Um, hope this kind of shows uh, what I've been saying in a couple previous videos, that the pullover is deceptively complex, and I think that is a big part of why it died out, not a lack of merit. It's certainly a wonderful exercise for the lats and many other things, but it's easy to think you understand it. And based on that misunderstanding, think it's worthless when there's in fact a lot more nuance to it and you have to actually you know, perform it correctly to get the desired results. And I think that didn't translate over to the era of mass communication. Um, it didn't, it didn't work out so well for that, but now hopefully we're going to be able to change that with, you know, social media allowing us to find those niches where there are people who do want more uh, complete accurate information and are capable of understanding all that nuance so that's what i'm trying to put back into the fitness industry and anyway i hope you guys found this interesting remember to like and subscribe and whatnot if you found it good leave me a comment if there's any other uh, exercises you want some clarity on i'd be happy to help and thank you for watching